Hi everyone, this is Kevin again. Today um, I want to do a study on the number seven in the scriptures, okay, and how that God uses the number seven over and over and over again throughout the scriptures. Numbers absolutely have meanings in the Bible. God uses numbers uh, to signify different things. Um, and we're going to cover, I could cover all the numbers, but I'm not going to cover that right now. I'm just going to cover the number seven, which I think is the most significant of all the numbers used in the Bible. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to start. I'm going to go through three different web pages to kind of give you some information about the number seven. And this first one is from BibleStudy.org. Okay. I'm going to give you... Um, in the description box, I'm going to give you the links to these three websites that we're going to cover so that you can actually look yourself and see what, what I'm showing you later on. Okay, the meaning of numbers. Number seven, used 735 times, 54 times in the book of Revelation alone. The number seven is the foundation of God's word. If we include this, with this count how many times sevenfold and seventh is used our total jumps to 860 references seven is the number of completeness and perfection both physical and spiritual it derives much of its meaning from being tied directly to god's creation of all things according to some jewish traditions the creation of adam occurred on September 26, 3760 B.C., or the first day of Tishri, which is the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar. The word created is used seven times describing God's creative work. Genesis 1-1, 21, 27, three times, 2-3, two, 2-4. Two, there are seven days in a week, and God's Sabbath is on the seventh day. The Bible as a whole was originally divided into seven major divisions. They are, number one, the law, number two, the prophets, number three, the writings or psalms, number four, the gospels and acts, number five, the general epistles, number six, the epistles of Paul, and number seven, the book of Revelation. The total number of originally inspired books was 49, or seven times seven, demonstrating the absolute perfection of the Word of God. Appearances of the number seven. There are at least seven men in the Old Testament who are specifically mentioned as a man of God. They are Moses, in Joshua 14.6, David, 2 Chronicles 8.14, Samuel, 1 Samuel 9, 6 and 14, Shemaiah, 1 Kings 12.22, Elijah, 1 Kings 17.18, Elisha, 2 Kings 5, 8, and Egdalia, Jeremiah 35, 4. In the book of Hebrews, written by the Apostle Paul, he uses seven titles to refer to Christ. The titles are Heir of All Things, Hebrews 1, 2, Captain of Our Salvation, 2, 10, Apostle, 3, 1, Author of Salvation, 5, 9, Forerunner, 6, 20, High Priest, 1021, and Author and Finisher of Our Faith, 12.2. Okay, we'll go down a little bit. Um, in Matthew 13, Jesus is quoted as giving seven parables. Matthew 13, 3 through 9, 24 through 30, 31 through 32, 33, 44, 45 through 46, 47. Seven psalms are ascribed to David in the New Testament. Psalm 2, 16, 32, 41, 69, 95, and 109. In the book of Revelation, there are seven churches, seven angels to the seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpet plagues, seven thunders, and seven last plagues. The first resurrection of the dead takes place at the seventh trumpet, completing salvation for the church. I don't quite agree with that part. Um... Here, how is the number seven linked with God's annual feast days? There are seven annual holy days, beginning with Passover and ending with the last great day. 
the day after the Feast of Tabernacles ends in the fall. Uh, <clears throat> a cycle of the holy days is completed in three festival seasons by the seventh month of the sacred calendar. Passover and unleavened bread, first month. Pentecost, third month. And trumpets, atonement, tabernacles, and last great day, seventh month. Okay, so now, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go to another page. Um, this one is um, from Got Questions. Okay. God's number of completion, perfection, and rest. That's number seven. Okay, here we go. Here's some really good things to remember, okay, about seven, how it's used. Seventh day of creation signified completion and rest. Seven great land masses form the complete earth. Seven great bodies of water form a complete ocean. Seven colors make a perfect spectrum. Seven colors in the rainbow. Interesting that the LGBT flag only has six colors. Read why does the LGBT use God's rainbow for its flag. Seven notes make a perfect scale. Seven covenants of God with Adam or with God with man. Ad Adamic. Noah, Abrahamic, Mosaic, Levitic, Davidic, Messianic. Seven dispensations of God complete human history. Seventh day was a Sabbath for Israel, a day of rest. Seventh year was a sabbatical year, a year of rest. Seven sabbatical years followed by the year of Jubilee. Seven days for the Feast of Passover. Seven weeks between Passover and Pentecost. Seven days for the Feast of Tabernacles. Seven years was the time it took to complete construction of the first temple. Seven pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. Seven days was the time of mourning for the dead. Seven times of forgiving was elevated to 70 times 70, seven by Jesus. And I just want to mention there too, not only that, but in, in Daniel chapter 9, uh, God gave Israel, or gave the Jews, uh, he gave them 70 weeks of years. So that's 70 times 7 also, okay, 490 years. Seven Greek-speaking Christians were appointed by the twelve apostles, Acts 3, 6, 3. Seven titles for Jesus in Hebrews. Seven divisions in the Bible, Law, Prophets, Writings, Gospel and Acts, Paul's epistles, general epistles, and the book of completion. That's Revelation. We mentioned that. That other uh, webpage before this mentioned that. Seven spiritual gifts given from God the Father. Romans 12, 1 through 8. Here we go. The book of Revelation, which offers this great display of sevens. Seven churches. Seven letters to the seven churches. Seven golden candlesticks. Seven stars. Seven angels, seven lamps of fire, seven spirits of God, seven sealed judgments, seven horns and seven eyes on the Lamb, seven trumpets, seven trumpet judgments, seven thunders, seven thousand men slain, seven heads and seven crowns on the great red dragon, seven heads on the leopard-like beast of the sea, seven last plagues, seven golden vials, seven bold judgments, seven heads of blasphemy on the scarlet-colored beast, Seven mountains, seven kings. Seven hours. This is of interest, but understand that it is not of biblical authority. There is a claim in Jewish tradition that the first man, Adam, was completed in seven hours. Okay, that's not really... We're not going to go by that, but by the scriptures... I want to go to the next um, webpage now. Okay, now this one here... Uh, seven, the spiritual perfection and fullness of completion. It is the number of covenant and of the Holy Spirit. Seven is the sec the second perfect number. In Hebrew, in Hebrew, seven is Sheva. From the root Sheva, or Sheba, I guess, meaning to be full. God rested on the seventh day, Saturday, after creation, Genesis 2, 2. To swear an oath in Hebrew is to seven oneself. There are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then it gives a reference to Isaiah 11.1 1 for some reason. But the sacred menorah has seven branches, six on each side 
of a central shaft and seven cup shaped lamps for the olive oil. There were seven classes of furniture in the tabernacle. Bronze sacrificial altar, bronze laver, golden menorah, golden table of the bread of the presence, golden altar of incense, ark of the covenant, and the mercy seat slash seat of atonement. The tabernacle was built in six days and dedicated on the seventh, Exodus 40, 17. It took Solomon seven years to build the temple in Jerusalem, 1 Kings 6, 37-38. There are seven annual holy feast days observed under the law of the Sinai Covenant, Leviticus 23, 1-44. The Feast of Passover is the first month of the liturgical year, but the seventh month of the civil year, Exodus 12, 1-2. The Feast of Tabernacles completes the cycle of holy days in the seventh month of the liturgical year, Leviticus 23, 33-43. There are multiple sevens in the book of Revelation. There are 55 sevens and five sevenths. Uh, let's see, five, five, seven, okay, phrases of sevens in the book of Revelation. List of sevens in the book of Revelation. Okay, we kind of went through this already in the, in the last webpage, but, you know, here's the list. Churches, letters, spirits, golden lampstands, stars. Seals, horns, eyes, angels, trumpets, thunders, 7,000 people, heads, crowns, plagues, golden bowls, hills, kings, last seven visions. Seven is a significant number in the natural world. Mammals and birds have a gestation of multiples of seven. Uh, that's kind of interesting as well. Um, okay, so... You get the you get the idea here that seven is a very significant number to God, and used for the number of completion. Okay, and we know this by the very first instance that we see this in is the fact that God rested on the seventh day. He created everything in six days. He rested on the seventh day. Why did He create that as a rest day? We know that God is Almighty. Did God need to rest on the seventh day? Was he tired from built, making everything in six days? No, God is, he doesn't get tired. God is from everlasting to everlasting. He's almighty. He doesn't get tired, but he created that day of rest. That seventh day was a significant day, and that was what he called the day of rest, and I think it was actually pointing towards a time in the future. A lot of, time, a lot of times we see scriptures in the Old Testament that are referring to things that are going to happen in the New Testament. A shadow of things to come. Okay, and so the number seven is used so many times, and like they said in, in Revelation, it's used a lot. Okay, and there, there's a significance to the, number of se to the number seven as I've shown you here. So I hope that you... Um, got something out of this. I hope that it, maybe you understand a little bit better about the number seven. There are a lot of other numbers in the scriptures as well that have significant meanings like the number three. Uh, well, one, two, three, a, a lot of the different numbers have significant meanings. And uh, I could probably go over those, but it would take a while. So my main objective today was to talk about the number seven, which I think is the most significant number in the scriptures, even though the other numbers have meanings as well. And God does go, he puts a lot of significance on numbers, and especially the number seven. So anyway, I, I hope that this helped you. I know I kind of went through it pretty quickly. I'm going to give you the, um, I'm going to give you the links to these web pages in the description box so you can go t through them and, and, walk, and look through them a little bit more carefully if you want to and study them a little bit more and even go to those references in the scriptures to see and study yourself a sh uh, study yourself to be approved of God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and also being a Berean, not just taking what I say or what these people say in the web page, but actually searching out the matter for yourself in the scriptures. And, uh, you know, just to find out for yourself what the significance is to the number seven. With that, I'm going to say God bless you. I hope that uh, if there are any of you that are listening 
are watching this video today, that if you don't know for sure that if you died today that you would be actually going to heaven, that you could know that by knowing that Jesus Christ, God, he's both God and man at the same time. He lived 2,000 years ago on this earth and had a ministry for about three and a half years. And then he died on the cross to pay for our sins, all the sins of the world, so that you could have eternal life if you were put your trust, put your belief in him, believe on him, and that you would be saved and have eternal life. And that's his desire, is that you would be saved, that you would understand that you're a sinner on your way to eternal torment, but that you can be saved if you will see yourself as a sinner in need of a Savior. Come to him broken and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Please, Lord, save me. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe that you were in the grave three days and three nights, and that you rose from the dead victorious over hell and death, and that you sit at the right hand of the Father right now, that you are God and man at the same time, Lord Jesus, and that you paid fully for my sins on the cross. And I pray that you would put your trust in him today. And with that, I must say God bless you all, and uh, for my brethren my sisters and brothers and sisters in Christ continue to study the word, continue to preach the gospel and witness to others who are not saved so that they can be, they can hear the gospel and have this opportunity to be saved in these last days and uh, continue to watch for Jesus on a day to day basis, knowing that we are living in the last days of the church age. So with that, I'm going to say God bless you for now. Bye.